What would you do if you were me and you got two items delivered to you by two different companies that you really respect asking you to review their product and it's the same product? What if that product was RGB lights? I heard from uh, two companies right after the holidays, and uh, both of them had products that they wanted me to try out. One of them was the small rig RM75, a very small, very compact RGBW video light. Uh, another company, this is Suti Photo, and they wanted me to look at their Suti Photo TP25 RGB light ones. So my idea was that I'd do both of these videos at the same time, do a head-to-head -head comparison and see which one I like better. As it happened, uh, they turned out to be uniquely different products. If you want the short version of this, I love both of these things and for a whole bunch of different reasons. And I'm gonna go through that real quick and, uh, and, and let you know what, what I found and show you what I found and uh, where these things come into their own, what their strengths are. I can't remember the last time I had so much fun uh, playing around in the garden at night. In fact, I can't remember ever doing that, ever going in a garden at night. So it was a, it was a red letter day for me. In many respects, these things are similar. Uh, they're both RGBW lights, which means they, they are LED lights that have individually addressable, uh, controllable LED uh, uh, diodes for the different colors, and that you can blend those colors uh, in any way you want. And you can blend them with white as well, so you can dilute them down with a full spectrum white light. They, they both do that. Uh, but their form factors are very different, and what they turn out to be really good at are different too. I was thinking that these were going to be toys to play with and have fun with. Uh, I wasn't expecting both of them to be serious production tools. Both of them have a number of different modes that they operate in. The, the primary mode for, for this as a tool in the studio is the CCT um, setting. That's the color temperature setting. And basically it's a white light that you have great flexibility to control the color temperature. You can get it as warm as 2800 and as cool as 10,000. The small rig also has a broad range. You can get from 2500 up to 8500. And you can also control the intensity of the light in each of the modes. In the special effects modes, you can also control the rate of the special effect uh, from one to 10. They have both of them a mode uh, that they call HSI. The HSI is just a hue, saturation, and intensity control where you can dial in a color using a zero to 360 scale, and then you can adjust the intensity, adjust the saturation. But if you want even tighter control, and this is again the same for both of these lights, you can numerically set the color that you're looking for in the red, green, blue, and white channels way more sophisticated than I was expecting. You have a couple of uh, preset buttons uh, on this device so that you can jump straight from special effects to the RGB or to the uh, CCT it puts out a ton of light. Both of these devices can be controlled from a cell phone and it really, really works. When we were doing some light painting uh, last night, I had my friend running around waving this and uh, I was on the phone changing the, the light intensity and the light colors. And it's immediate, and uh, the range on it is amazing. And it was doing both of the lights either at the same time, if I had it set that way, or individually. You can put them in different groups, it has six groups, 21 channels, I think, or 12 channels. But the, uh, the app you know, is easy to download and it really works. It's very simple, just sliders on the phone. I normally hate using apps 
for stuff. Um, I just don't like that having to reach from my phone to adjust something that I could adjust with my hand. But this was a creative use that I wouldn't have been able to adjust it with my hand. And I didn't have to teach my friend how to change the, the buttons and everything in the dark. I could just do it for him. So uh, very neat, very neat indeed. Before I get ahead of myself though, let me show you the small rig RM75. The small rig device is solid, well-built, seamless, beautiful. It's got a carbon fiber back, uh, well, carbon fiber colored, I guess, but it's it's cool looking. It has a uh, an OLED display for your uh, settings on the back, and it's controlled just by one knob on the top. This can be controlled remotely, and there are even more functions than the ones that you can uh, access manually. It doesn't say what they are, it just says in the book, hook it up to Bluetooth and there's more stuff you can do with it. The app's called the Small GoGo -Go app and you just download it to your phone. I wasn't able to pair the, the uh, light with my phone. I'm going to try it again before this video is over and, and uh, just confirm that I can get it to work. It is uh, fast charging. It'll charge it. Uh, five volts or nine volts, two amps. Uh, so it works for the uh, the um, uh, USB-C rapid charge. And it takes way less than two hours to charge this. It takes about two hours to charge the big ones if they're completely dead. The, um, uh, the battery is in the little one is 4,000 milliamp hours. In the big ones, it's 3,000. But they both last ages. I hooked this up and just let it drain. And the thing stayed on that bright, too bright to look at for uh, over three hours, three and a quarter hours. And then it just went out. It didn't dim. It didn't flicker. It just went out. And uh, I got much the same performance out of the big lights too. This device is made to go on a camera. It has a magnetic base, so it can go on anything metal uh, and, and it'll stick there. But it also has a screw hole in the bottom, which turned out to be invaluable for flinging this thing around at night on a long exposure. But that's the, the bat of the uh, magnet, by the way. I put this little uh, screwy thing on the bottom and uh, put a rope on it so that I could fling it around. It, it's built like a tank. It is really solid. It also comes, by the way, with a beautiful um, silicone diffuser. This may not spend all of its life on this light. There may be some other things that, that happen to it. It's really just one control. It's a wheel. It's a wheel that you can press and long press and scroll with. Very easy to use, very intuitive, uh, very quick to, to get the hang of. I took this out with me the other night and discovered a couple of very useful uses for it. One of the cool things about living in the deep south is that winter just really isn't. It, uh, it gets a little cool in the afternoons like this uh, and it gets dark early. What happens when the lights go out, which is going to happen here in just a little bit? Well, that's what I want to talk to you about. Well, actually, you already know that because you're watching the video. I think I just saw something interesting. That is a, that is one of our sweat bees. See him? That's quite a find in January. He's moving very, very slowly. I'm gonna see if I can get some light on him. What a treat. There we go. One, one last go. And it is dark. I hope, I hope he shows up. That was an unexpected treat. You'll have to look through all of Small Rig's documentation about this new RGB light of theirs uh, all the way to the very end. And you still won't get to the part that explains how useful this light is for catching insects at night.
I almost get the impression that uh, that they weren't thinking about macro photographers when they invented this video light. When Small Rig asked me to uh, to look at this new light, uh, I told them I'd love to, but that the ways that I would use it probably wouldn't be uh, typical <laughs> for, for most of the people who buy this very small palm-sized video light. Uh, it is an incredible video light. I don't even have the diffuser on it right now because I forgot it. I'm also hand-holding it because I lost the little gizmo that goes on top of the camera that you screw this onto. I wasn't planning on coming out and doing a video this evening, but I came out to collect some insects. And in addition to being just a good idea to have a powerful light with you when you're out in the pitch dark around alligators and snakes looking for insects, uh, it's also a, a really cool way to attract insects to you. Uh, not something you want to do most of the time where I live. In fact, you want to attract them to other people, not to you. Uh, but in the winter, when uh, the pickings are fairly slim. Uh, using a light like this really does bring a lot of the stuff I like to catch. Mosquitoes, for example, will, uh, uh, will, will flock to this. If you come out here with a net and just uh, hold this light somewhere around chest level and sweep in front of you, you will catch insects even when there aren't any. Isn't that amazing? Trust me on this one. <laughs> So as you can see, this gave me an opportunity to do some handheld video at night, and it was dark by the time I finished. And uh, it really performed well. Um, and it, it, it had been on for hours at that point, and it never dimmed. I turned it off, brought it in and charged it, charged it up in about an hour. Uh, so for running and gunning on the go video, whether it is video of yourself, in which case this will fit on a vlogging camera. It actually has uh, the, the screw device. If you use a cold shoe adapter, it'll fit on a GoPro as well. And I used it on the GoPro um, because I didn't have the right attachment. I just held it and shot my video like this. And I think the, the quality of the light, considering that was the first time I had turned it on outdoors, was remarkable. But in addition to doing everything that you've just seen, it also has 10 very cool effects settings. So this is the RGB mode in the special effects and it just loops through all the colors. This is paparazzi. I guess that's flashlights, uh, flashes going off. So that's, that's it on frequency of one, which is the slowest. And this is what the paparazzi are like every time I go out my front door. This is party. It's a very boring party. Yeah. Have you ever been to a party that just does this? That's probably why I stopped going to parties. This is lightning. That actually is quite convincing if you don't look at it. No, it's not. It's not convincing. Okay. Oh, it's only on uh, 10%. Let me, let me crank it all the way up and have real lightning. Yeah. Okay. This is it on lightning now. Nope, still not buying it. Looks like a flashing LED. If any of any of you find people have tendencies towards epilepsy, this would be a really good time for you to go watch something else. It gets worse from here. Fault bulb mode. It's a broken light bulb. If you didn't want to buy one of these and watch this broken light bulb, you could come to my house and look at any of them for any period of time. And they all do this. So this isn't very special. Let's see what else. TV. This is a TV. I suppose what it means is if you were using this to film and, and you put it over there, I could be there watching the TV and it would be convincing because of the color. Do I look like I'm watching TV? I don't watch television, so I don't know how to do it. This is a candle. That's a bright candle, isn't it? I think probably to test this one, we should turn it down. Let's turn the intensity down to 1% and see if, oh, that was 0%. That's 1%. I just happened to have a piece of acrylic. This might look like a candle from the other side of this. 
No, it looks like an LED light from the other side of this. But from down there, it flickers like a candle. Ooh, look at that. That looks good with that light on it. So candle power is quite impressive. Let's see what's left. Random. This is random. I like that. That's random on high frequency and only 1%. This is bright random. This is more like party, if you ask me. Yeah, or concert. All right, there's a couple of really funny ones that you should not be allowed to use. This is police car. Brief story. I was using the Suti photo. I left it on on very low power and it was just glowing on the car seat and I thought I should turn it off. So I reached down and started pressing the buttons to turn it off and this came on in the car, in traffic. Boy, everybody started driving slow. It took me forever to get home. A fire truck, it's the same, only red, just red. And then there's the uh, ambulance, which is the same, just blue. And welding. <coughs> yep, okay, that looks like welding. SOS, save our souls. Morse code, dot, 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 dash, 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 or something like that. Yep, yeah, I'd go save you if you were doing that. That looks like you're in distress. What else? We must be through pulsing. That's pulsing, I suppose. So that's it. We still have over six hours of power left on this after going through all of these things and me mucking around with it earlier. So forgive this interruption, but I just managed to pair the small rig light with the phone app, and it is amazing. It really is. I've hooked up the light to the phone, and it gives me complete control of, of the light in all the normal modes. As in addition to the HSI, which is fast and accurate, there's the RGBW that we were talking about earlier. And then the special effects modes that we talked about, including the terrible party mode. But the extras that you cannot use just in the device include a color card so that you can set the color palette uh, for your video uh, by uh, lighting the scene to, uh, uh, to, to that uh, a chosen color. And these... These colors are, um, you'd have to talk to a video person to find out where they come from. Uh, I'll ask my friend Mike, he understands this stuff very well. But I have a feeling that this will come in very handy if you're trying to match video uh, to, to uh, different scenes. Anyhow, that's not all. It also has the most amazing color picker that will change the color of your light to match the color that you pick. That's pretty close to brilliant don't you think i think anyway it's uh it's amazing and I'm, i'll show you what i'm i mean if i decide if i take a picture of something like a screwdriver wonderful picture that is and then i select that color that is the color light i get I, I may just be easy to please, but I think that this is just brilliant. So useful. And then uh, there's a, uh, a light effect pickup. Okay, I have no idea what that is. Yeah, I don't know what that means. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to read about that and uh, and then I'll come I'll report back to you at some at a later date. I just discovered this a few minutes ago, but I wanted to be complete and let you know that yes, this does have an app. It does work just as well as the Suti photo. So there you go. All right, time to move on to the Suti photo. So let's take a look at uh, Suti photo. Uh, here are the two lights sitting on the table, and I am going to show you that the app actually works so that we can run these things. Let me see. I've got them in my photography doodad, and here they are. I don't know if they've been found yet. Yes, they have. Okay, fantastic. 
So the functions are very basic and they're the same as they are on the device. You've got the CCT for the color temperature. You can adjust the intensity, the temperature, and the green magenta compensation for uh, the adjusting the, the tone of the light. HSI, pick a color, any color, and find it on the, um, on the color circle here. You can also change the saturation and the intensity. In the RGBCW, you can change the red, green, and blue channels independently, as well as the color temperature and the white channel. Uh, great fun, very good fun to play with outdoors at night. That's, uh, that's where I had the most fun with this. Did I tell you that both of these came with a, its own little mini tripod? I've lost them already. That's why I've got the Manfrotto on there. But they stand up and they screw into uh, light poles, which is great. And then finally, special effects. Let me put the other one on the special effects too. So now we've got them both doing the same thing. And um, I'm getting ready to have an epileptic fit. So we'll move straight on to the police. Wow, that is intensely bright. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to drop the intensity down. Okay, it's not going to do right. I think I've somehow got it on a group now, so that's okay. Fire truck. No, the other one's still doing police. So I'll turn that one off. And then we'll just look at the top one. Okay, good. So we are now on the fire truck. You can also do an ambulance, which is solid blue. These are the same as on the small rig. This is a glowing fire. This one doesn't have a candle. It doesn't have welder. It doesn't have random. And thank goodness it doesn't have party, uh, which um, I couldn't take another depressing party tonight. This is fireworks. This is a faulty light bulb or a faulty uh, light wand, I guess. This is a television on in the background, and this is an RGB circle. I do love the RGB circle. It's a, it's a very pleasing thing to have on your doodad. The other one's paparazzi, and I'm not putting that one on because it is really irritating um, the way it flashes. So there you go. That's it. It does the same, only it doesn't have as many special effects as the little one. But seeing as the effects are all basically the same, a flickery bulb, um, it's probably not a big deal. M more importantly, they both do the same thing when it comes to uh, RGB activities. So there you go. That's the, that's the Suti photos doing their color thing. I could watch these things do this all day long. Very pleasing. Of all the ways I've come up with to use the small rig RN75 in my macro photography, there's one that stands out as really, really significant. And that is with my microscope, because up until now, I've been unable to record video. So this is my microscope. And uh, when I have the beam splitter closed, I, uh, I can use the camera uh, in live view and I can record video on it. The problem is I have no depth perception when I'm looking through the beam splitter because only one of the eyes is getting the light. Uh, so what I've done is I've come up with this uh, little crafty way that I can get both of my hands in there onto the subject without any of this stuff getting in the way. And I've got a, a tiny mirror, which happens to be just big enough actually, uh, at an angle that looks down on my subject. Now, when I'm doing this to demonstrate something to you, I can't have the camera on because that's the problem. So I would turn the camera off, which I can't do with that hand. Turn the camera off and, and then open the beam splitter up so that I have all the light that I need. That's gonna give me the binocular vision that I need. So this is what I'm operating on. But instead of relying on the camera from above, I'm relying on the camera from the side, but this gives me plenty of room to work and it gives you a clear, unobstructed view of what I'm doing. And um, it's all possible because of my new light. I have a shot light on, on the, the microscope and it's a lovely light, uh, but 
I'm going to actually take this off because it gets in the way when I'm trying to, to do the procedures. So what I'll do is I'll just use this, which I can keep well out of the way, and it gives a lovely, soft, diffused light, and I can even change the color temperature of the light. Why I would want to do that, I don't know, but I can. How about that? So 10 points for a uh, small rig in this battle royale of RGB lights. This is going to be a game changer for me. Now, we took this out to give it a try. I think we have to take the sticks out and give them a try. So my plan was, as soon as these lights arrived, I would go outside and shoot a sequence of very entertaining and enjoyable light painting scenes. Isn't that what you're supposed to do with RGB light ones? I think it is. And that was my plan. And uh, that day arrived today and the lights were ready and charged up and um, my camera was ready. My GoPro was ready. I had uh, made some little accessories that would help this be the best light painting session ever. Uh, and then I was heading out the door and realized, well, I don't have anybody to do the light painting because I'm not going to do it. I'm a serious person. I'm a serious photographer. I can't be running around like a cheerleader outdoors in front of people. So I needed somebody who could do this for me. So once I've exhausted my list of people that like me and owe me favors, neither of them were available. Well, actually I went through several categories before I got to the people who barely know me, who I haven't disappointed in the past, who might do me a favor. There was one name on that list. And uh, yeah, so I called her and uh, said, would you come wave some lights around for me? She wanted to know how much I was gonna pay her. I told her I'd give her half of what I made. She said, yeah, she'll do it. And I thought, well, fantastic. Let's get this show on the road. And I said, well, when will you be here? And she said, well, I'm not coming to you. It's your idea. You come to me. And I said, okay, where do you live? I was pretty sure she lived about a mile from my house. No, she lives at one state away from my house. And if you live in the UK or, uh, some other civilized part of the world, a state is a gigantic block of land. She lives in another state from me. So I'm driving over there because I literally have nobody else to wave these sticks around and I am not gonna do it. These are the lights, by the way, by Suti Photo. Gosh, I hope that's how you pronounce it. It's how you spell it, Suti Photo. So before one of you asks why I don't just get Arlen to wave the sticks around, every time I ask him to do anything, like when I asked him to move the piano the other day, it's, I can't do it, I can't do it, I've got my leg, my leg. The man has one amputation, just one, mind you, and he can't do anything. He is milking this for all it's worth. Couldn't move the piano, can't dance around in the garden with the light sticks. Wouldn't help me change a tire either useless. We'll be there in just a couple of hours. You're going to want to see this. This is not going very well. She, she overheard me.
me to stay outside with a camera laughing when it was a freezing, bone-chilling 52 degrees last night. I thought I was going to have to have heated IV fluids to resuscitate me. It was that cold. And then my friend Al from Canada called to say it was minus 30 and some organ of his had frozen. <laughs> Against my better judgment, I am going to show you the other thing that I do with the wand. And I'm going to have to take you back to my office, but you must promise not to look at anything except what I tell you to look at. You're going to look, I know you're going to look. Well, I can't let you actually look in any of these, well, you've been in there before. So you can look in there. Um, have you been in there before? That's my equipment room. I'm looking at the floor. I think it's safe. Okay, so this is the back of uh, my computer screen. It doesn't work, but it's a nice thing for people to see as long as they don't look at the front. And the problem was when I was doing video conferencing, you couldn't see the pictures on my wall because it was too dark and the video light didn't shine back there. But now it does. And I have plenty of light so people don't have to look at my face. They can look at the pictures instead and be distracted. And how have I worked this miracle? With a, uh, a magic wand of light. I just put it on a coat hanger with some Velcro and it lights up all my pictures. When Suti Photo asked me to look at these lights, I wasn't really sure what kind of application they'd have, when they'd be useful. I thought to myself, if I, these things have a quarter inch screw on either end. And I thought, hmm, put those on little short light stands and position them, one maybe about there. And now out in the woods or in, on, a, on a location somewhere, when I want to, to do a quick video with the GoPro, this is the, uh, this is the output from these two lights. They are really, really handy as powerful studio lights. This is an, a relatively expensive, well, it depends what you compare it to. It's $119, which I thought when I, when I heard about the thing was expensive for a, for a light. Uh, it's not. It's not expensive for everything that this does. And to, to think what I would pay for a single uh, studio light, um, to have a complete setup like this with remote control for a hundred bucks is, um, yeah, it's it's a good deal. $119, uh, that's with a, a discount that uh, Suti Photo has given us. Um, and the link will be in the show notes. The small rig is smaller, less powerful, but equally versatile, and it does plenty of stuff that the big one can't do. Microscope light, perfect. Absolutely perfect. $79 for this. Uh, like the other one, comes with a charger, a cable, USB-C. So go buy yourself a little one. If you're a shorter person, more diminutive, and you don't need a big light like that, if you're, uh, if you're a big strapping fellow like me, get one of these. It's two feet long, 24 inches. Did I tell you it had screw holes on either end so that you can put it in a, on a light stand like this? Very handy. Just think of the cool, creative stuff that you can do with these. So that's us underway for 2022. There is so much great stuff we're gonna be doing this year. It is gonna be fantastic. See you in a few days with something else. Stay safe and be well.